let's actually move on uh, to um, a very um, common scenario in all of our practices, which is uh, when we have a patient that does not have an identifiable mutation, uh, certainly we are using chemotherapy. I think we need to remember that chemotherapy works for these patients. Uh, it improves survival and in some studies improves quality of life. Uh, and even for our patients that have uh, identifiable mutations, we use chemotherapy for these patients and it works. Um, and I think the chemotherapy story for the adenocarcinoma population, there's some competing strategies and I imagine each of us may have a different, um, different treatment approach for our stage four adenocarcinoma patients. So, Chandra, I'm going to start with you. Can you walk us through um, your treatment approach for a patient that does not have an ident identifiable driver, uh, your chemotherapy selection, whether or not you're using an antiangiogenic strategy, and then maintenance as well? What, what has been your, you've done a lot of work in this uh, space. So as I'm uh, part of ECOG, uh, ECOG established that carboplatin, paclitaxel, and bevacizumab was superior to carboplatin and paclitaxel with a two-month overall improvement in progression-free survival and also a two-month uh, improvement in overall survival. That has been our gold standard. Uh, and uh, we have built up on that based on the maintenance studies that were done where uh, Olympta proved to be uh, beneficial in terms of both progression-free survival and overall survival. After induction therapy, we have adopted uh, the use of pemetrexid in the maintenance setting. Though I think that there is no optimal maintenance treatment, and that's where ECOG 5508 comes in, uh, which I'm the co-chair of, and uh, the, the three maintenance uh, regimens there to which patients are being randomized after four cycles of carboplatin, paclitaxel, and bevacizumab are uh, bevacizumab alone, which was used in ECOG 4599, or uh, pemetrixid alone, or the combination of pemetrixid and bevacizumab. So actually, uh, not to put in a plug, the study has completed accrual <laughs> at this point in time. Still important. And is awaiting analysis. So we will have a definitive maintenance therapy uh, in that setting. Now, I think, uh, on the other hand, the combination of uh, either cisplatin pemetrixid or carboplatin pemetrixid is also the regimen of choice in, uh, in, Europe. in Europe and also in the US that uh, though we use more carboplatin as compared to what you do yeah. uh, in Europe, I think that uh, carboplatin pemetrixid with or without bevacizumab is uh, used in the community setting and also at the academic institution. So that is, and it has shown equivalent effects uh, as compared to the combination of carboplatin, paclitaxel, and uh, bevacizumab. So that's the other choice that we have. So outside of a clinical trial, I use Pemetrixid as the maintenance treatment. And on the clinical trial, while well, we had ECOG 5508, which will answer the question of the definitive maintenance uh, treatment. So your induction regimen is generally carbopem or carbopaclitaxel bevacizumab. What, what, uh, what do you generally so choose? If in I'm going to use uh, outside of a clinical trial, outside of a clinical trial, if I'm going to use bevacizumab, I usually use carboplatin, paclitaxel, and bevacizumab. Okay. There is some data that the taxanes and bevacizumab have synergistic effect based on the intratumoral pressures. So I think I see a benefit there. And uh, though the uh, randomized trial which was published, uh, which showed that carboplatin, pemetrixid, and bevacizumab was equivalent to carboplatin, paclitaxel, and bevacizumab, though there was a second part to it, which we haven't really answered because in the Bev, uh, Pemetrixid arm, the maintenance treatment was uh, the combination of uh, uh, PEM, BEV. Okay. So I think uh, until we establish that, we don't use two drugs uh, outside of a clinical trial in the maintenance setting. And is there a BEV eligible versus ineligible, and what is that uh, discriminating point for you in terms of clinical characteristics or age? Uh... So we also published the data on uh, the elderly patients from ECOG 4599 trial where we showed that patients who were uh, greater than 70 years of age uh, really did not benefit from bevacizumab. So I think that group probably is uh, an optimal group for treatment with the combination of carboplatin and pemetrixid or cisplatin and pemetrixid without BEV. And then uh, patients who have uh, uh, coronary artery disease or uh, cerebrovascular hemorrhage or arterial thromboembolism are uh, the uh, groups of patients who should be excluded from BEV. Though I think venous thromboembolism is uh, a relative contraindication, and we can, if we treat the venous thromboembolism, we can give uh, BEV to those patients. Okay. So there are competing standards. I'd love to hear from other panelists what their approach is for 
first line adenocarcinoma patient. Um, uh, Govindan, what, how, how do you approach your garden variety patient without an actionable mutation? Sure. The front line, I tend to use more pemetrexid carboplatin. Uh, I am less persuaded that uh, adding bevacizumab makes a big difference. There have been other studies not showing as much benefit as we have seen with the ECOG study. I do give maintenance pemetrexid for those patients. The ECOG study that Chandra talked about, I think, is a very important one. Uh, but definitely, I think in the fit ideal patient uh, with no absolute contraindication, um, Pacrotax or Carbobev is an option that, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not something that they can ignore. Okay. Sarah? Or... Yeah, no, I, I agree with what's been said. I, I tend to use carboplatin and, and uh, Pemetrexid. And I think when you, the trial that we were discussing where you compare the, the two regimens, Pacrotaxel or Pemetrexid, the survival looks similar. The toxicity there's differences in toxicity, and but overall, you know, you could say the toxicity looks similar in terms of number of, of, of toxic events. I, you know, I, I think just from experience, I think pemetrexid tends to be easier on patients. There's no hair loss, which I think is a big issue for some patients. So I tend to use pemetrexid thinking it's, it's similar in terms of clinical outcomes and, and more tolerable. Mark, your perspective on this? Um, again, I'm kind of old school. I mean, my, my go-to thing would be cis, pem, and bev. For patients that can't take cysts, I'd give Pacli, Pacli Pemin. So a non-platinum based regimen. A non-platinum based regimen. You know, three active drugs we try to give. And, and the nice thing about Bev is that for the vast majority of patients, it can be added to the two other drugs. That's pretty unusual, actually. You can do that uh, without a lot of side effects. I, for better or worse, give both Pem and Bev uh, in, for maintenance. Okay. All right. The European perspective, first line? No, in Italy we decide if a patient is eligible for cisplatin or carboplatin and generally we use pemetrexid. So we decide or we do carboplatin, pemetrexid and pemetrexid maintenance or cispem and pemetrexid maintenance. I don't know why in Europe we don't use so much carbotaxol, bevacizumab, because some people maybe are scared about the toxicity, which is manageable at the end. So, but it, in Europe, is not the favorite regimen. And you don't use uh, bevacizumab with a pemetrexid-containing no, regimen? No, it's not reimbursed, and uh, it's impossible. Okay. <laughs>